These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. What's the symbol for charge? Q. And what's the unit for charge? Uh, what's the symbol for electric field? And what are the units for electric field? Units And is electric field a vector or a scalar? A vector. And what are the, what's the symbol for electric force? F. And what are the units? units. And is that a vector or a scalar? It's a vector. Good. Uh, well, what's the symbol for electric potential? And what are the units for that? Um, volts. Good. But what are the subunits for a volt? Um, maybe joules per Uh, what's the symbol for uh, electric potential energy? Joule. Uh, the symbol is capital U, but you're right that the unit for that is a joule. Okay. Good. Okay, and that should help us to see that you were right over here. So it was good that you knew what a volt was. However, you want to practice that so you can increase your confidence about that. Because unless we're confident about what a volt is, as we've talked about, we can't really have much intuition for what volts are telling us. And again, we've talked about the analogy between these two flowcharts. Just as the field determines the force, the potential determines the energy. So just like the field is newtons over coulombs, the energy, uh, the electric potential is joules over coulombs. So if we see this analogy, that should make us a lot more confident about what a volt is. Well, why is it so important to understand that? Well, for example, what does it mean if you have a 12 volt battery? What does that tell us about the battery if it's 12 volts? How can we use the idea of joules per coulombs to understand that? Um, it takes 12 joules of energy to move one coulomb from one from the bottom of the capacitor to the top. Good. Maybe at the bottom of the battery, excuse me, to the top. Good. Okay. So we can rewrite this as 12 joules per one coulomb. Well, joules tells us about the change in potential energy. So this is telling us that um, if we move one coulomb between the terminals, that its energy will change by 12 joules. That means the battery has to do 12 joules of work to move one coulomb. If we don't remember that volts are joules per coulomb, then we really have no idea what it means when we say that we have a 12 volt battery or a 12 volt capacitor or whatever. All right, good. Um, well, uh, what's the symbol for resistance? Yeah, capital R, and what's the unit for that? Um, Good. Do you remember what's the key equation for resistors? Um, Ohm's law, R equals I times B. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> B equals I times R. Right, voltage drop equals current times resistance. Mm -hmm. Good. Oops, before I forget, let's go back to electric potential. Is electric potential a vector or a scalar? Is electric potential a vector or a scalar? Um, I'm going to say a vector. How about electric potential energy? Is the electric potential energy a vector or a scalar? That's true, because all types of energy and work are scalars. Well, would that indicate that the electric potential was a vector or a scalar? Scalar. OK. Again, the analogy between these flowcharts might help us to remember the concepts. 
field determines force. Well, force is a vector, so it's somewhat reasonable that field should be a vector. But the potential determines the potential energy. Well, if energy is a scalar, it's somewhat reasonable that potential should be a scalar. Why do we keep making such a big deal about this? Because things that are vectors have to be broken into components. And things that are scalars do not have to be broken into components. And that makes a big difference when you're solving problems. One thing you mentioned you wanted to talk about today was maybe some electric potential problems. Well, it's very important when we're doing an electric potential problem to know whether we're going to have to break the potentials into components or not. Well, this tells us that we won't have to do that, although we would have to do it for electric field. All right, so once again, it's really helpful to have these two flowcharts kind of in front of you at the same time so you can see the parallels between field and force and potential and potential energy. Well, what's the symbol for capacitance? C. All right, now here's a unit that people really oftentimes forget. I don't know if you remember this. Remember what the unit for capacitance is? Um, I think farads. That's good that you know that. That's good. Capital F for farads. Good. All right, and we have a key equation for capacitors just like for resistors. Uh, you can always look that up, but do you happen to remember what this equation is? C equals Q over V. Right. I usually prefer to write it like this because it looks more like this, but you can write it either way. I might have mentioned to you just as a memory aid, I think of a CV, like a resume, and that helps me to remember this. All right, good. Uh, what's the symbol for current? I. Good. Capital or lowercase i is fine. And what's the unit for current? Um, amps. Good. But amps also have subunits. What would be the subunits for amps? Good. That's good. But what are the units for Good. As we've talked about in the past, the current tells us the rate that the charges are passing. Well, these are logical units for something that's indicating a rate. probably noticed that this is a kind of routine that I like to go through at the beginning of a lot of sessions and the reason is that I've uh, found that most students tend to just forget a lot of the stuff from previous weeks and it really takes a really strong conscious effort of constantly reviewing to prevent the ideas from getting confused in our minds. Um, so you don't have too much more time in between now and the test but I would still recommend um, doing this exercise a couple of times of just taking a blank piece of paper and writing all this stuff down so that you know that you're clear in your mind about the different concepts and so you know the concepts aren't getting, uh, aren't getting confused. Um, in your mind. Oh, so by the same token, um, we know that moving charges create magnetic fields. What's the symbol for a magnetic field? Um, B. Good. And here's another unit that people tend to forget. I don't know if you remember this unit. What's the unit for a magnetic field? This would be capital T for Tesla. That's really a um, really good idea to memorize that unit because magnetic field is a very important concept. Now, would magnetic field be a vector or a scalar? Mm, a vector. That's true. Fields in general are vectors. If electric field is a vector, it should make sense that magnetic field would be a vector. What would be the symbol for a magnetic force? F. Right. But if we have a problem with both electric and magnetic fields, we could use F sub E for electric and F sub B for the magnetic feet, uh, force. What would be the unit for the magnetic force? Because mm -hmm. it's a force. And um, is that a vector or a scalar, the magnetic force? Because all forces are vectors. And that would be the other indication that the magnetic field must be a vector because it's determining the magnetic force. So here's another flow chart that we've seen that's kind of similar to this flow chart up here. So we want to keep reviewing that the unit for magnetic field is um, the Tesla. Okay. All right, so like I said, it's a good habit just to take a blank piece of paper and try to come up with all these concepts out of your head um, so that you're getting uh, some intuition for the relationship between the concepts.